All right, today we are going to install the new high pressure pump. It's from an OM628. It has the potential to provide enough fuel flow for 450 horsepower. We're shooting for about 400, so it's pretty good. First step here is removing the fan. I had to remove the top support, remove the skid plate under the nose, and I have to pull back the hoses so I can push the fan up and out. And then now I can pull it out from the top side. With that done, I go in and remove the serpentine belt, get that out of the way. Now we can focus on the pump itself. I've already disconnected the wiring harness for the temperature sensor and the flow control valve. Move the harness up out of the way and we can start loosening bolts. Now, one of the first things I need to do is remove the bracket that covers the hoses. Then I can remove the high pressure line. When we get the high pressure line out of the way, we can start working on getting the hoses out. I use this special pair of pliers where I've ground the tip off. It's perfect for grabbing onto hoses. I'm able to pull the hoses off with that. Then I'm able to remove the three bolts that hold the original high pressure pump on. Wiggles, comes off. What you see here is the original coupler. It's claimed to be rather weak. I do have a replacement from Black Smoke Racing to use. And I start fitting the new high pressure pump on board and uh, being careful to plug up the hole so I don't get shavings inside the engine. I trim down the boss on the side of the thermostat housing. And then try fitting again. It looks like I've made enough clearance for that. I can look at what's next. I realize I've got to take at least one bolt off the cover. I did choose to leave the cover on for this. My theory is that when things aren't leaking, let's not encourage them to leak. And I'd rather not remove the entire valve cover, all the injectors, you name it. Although I already did that, I already replaced all the injectors. So I wind up placing it, marking with a paint marker where I see interference on my right and on my left. And it's only a little bit of metal that needs to be trimmed. I do need to tra trim this large boss on my right side, the engine's left. Trim that down and kind of kind of polish it up a little bit so there's no sharp edges. Then I can get into cutting below that, which is where I marked it. And after I've done this cutting, I can get in there with the screwdriver and pry it off and it just pops off. That way I don't have to go too deep and start scuffing up the head and it wouldn't matter that much anyways, but I really try to avoid scuffing up the head or doing anything to the head in this process. So then I go to my left, the engine's right, and I have to trim around this bolt hole because that, that corner that extends down is in the way. And it's really not very much. It needs to be trimmed from this cover in order to make the pump fit. I'm able to pry that off with a screwdriver, but yeah, I had to do some more cutting first. And then uh, I was able to get a screwdriver in and pop it loose. Here we go. So then that little piece came off again. You can see it's a pretty small piece of metal that I removed. Now I can go back in and start test fitting. And I found out I couldn't get the bolt in. And I realized that I needed to do some more trimming. Now this time I got smart and covered everything up with like old, um, old fabric in order to uh, cover things up. Because I was getting just dust everywhere. I was able to trim just a tiny little piece you can see here. And that gave me enough clearance. So I had to trim just a little bit more. I'd rather trim too little than too much. Anyhow, now I was able to get the bolt in. And with that bolt in, I was able to put the other bolt in down below, tighten them up. Now I'm only using two of the three bolts. There's not really a place to bolt it on my left, the engine's right. And then I'm able to attach the inlet line, which comes straight from the outlet on the filter. I'm also able to connect the, the out line, which goes to a manifold, sort of a fuel manifold on the intake manifold. Now I've got to connect the high pressure line here to the fitting there 
and it, it needs to be bent. And what I wound up doing was just removing it, putting it in the vise carefully. You know, you don't want to crush the tubing. You don't want to kink the tubing. And bit by bit, adjusting it, removing it, installing it. I did it a bunch of times. And I thought I had an issue with that black fitting now on our right. Uh, I thought the threads were boogered, but it was just that I couldn't line up the line enough i had to do a little bit more work on it but eventually i was able to get it connected and after i got it connected i was able to tighten everything up i've had no issues with leaks on this and it did not get pinched the next thing i realized is that i had a problem I'm looking at these mounts for the top of the radiator because really the fan when i reinstalled it is too close to the pump these things could clash because engines move you know, things move on cars, even though we like to treat them as stationary. If those rubber mounts could be pushed forward, here's one of the rubber mounts. If those rubber mounts could be pushed forward, we could get a little more space. And this is how it mounts. And here's the little screw that goes in from the top. I decided to grab some metal screws and build my own brackets in order to hold the radiator forward uh, you know, some fraction of an inch. Now, there's not much underhood clearance, so I had to go in and cut the heads off those bolts. Otherwise, they're going to be banging into the hood on the underside. I didn't want that, so I sliced them off. And what I'm not showing here is that I actually also sliced a slot into them, so they wind up looking like a big screw. Then I was able to use self-tappers in order to uh, go into holes that I built into these brackets. And on the second one, I got smart and used a center punch and pre-drilled, made it a little bit easier to install it. Now, naturally, I have to put the other screw in each one of these as well, which I'm not showing here. As you can see here, I was able to create a pretty good gap between the fan and the pump. They're not going to clash now. All right. In other videos, other people have said just connect this to the connector, zip tie it to the wiring harness. I've done that for a while, but... Talking with my tuner, he really wants us to go ahead and get this thing plumbed in. And let's do that. Let's do this the right way. And uh, what I've done, first of all, is I bought this T. This one's stainless. And uh, these are half inch NPT. And what I've done is I bought half inch brass NPT for these. Stainless was super expensive and I figure brass, screwed into stainless will probably seal very well i hope it doesn't lead to corrosion but anyhow we will be able to put these in these are half in pt and this is a three eighths inch barb on each end which might be a little on the big side for the eight millimeter hoses that are used on this car but i'm going to plumb this into the line this is going to give me a place to put my sensor now Obviously, I can't just screw this into this. This, as it turns out, is 14 by 1.5. It's a straight thread. It, it's not a ceiling thread. It's not a pipe thread. Uh, what's used for sealing is it screws into a flat surface, and we use this copper seal here, which I will anneal. It's a nice thick one. It's actually pretty good um, I'm gonna use the old one I'm not gonna replace it if I anneal this it'll be nice and soft and we'll make a nice it'll compress and you know conform and make a nice seal so in order to have something for this to screw into that goes into this I purchased this reducing coupler I've already modified it this side the outside is one half NPT and the inside was, I believe, 1 8 MPT. But what I did is I bought a kit to drill this out and bring it up to a 14 by 1.5 thread. And so now this screws in very nicely. Now, anytime you're doing machining and things like this, you, you're gonna wind up with chips. It's important to take some time and, you know, Make certain that things are nice and clean. There's no chips left. You do not want any chips in your fuel system because they're just going to go right into the engine. I'm going to plumb this in. This setup is going to get plumbed into the lines between the fuel filter 
and the pump. So this is after the filter. So any chips I leave in here could go right into the pump and destroy it. So we don't want to do that. So we'll make sure everything's super clean. This is now set up to screw into this. Again, it's 14 by 1.5. It looks like I got it nice and uh, got it at a nice right angle. It looks like it'll seal. Of course, I will be using this seal, which I'll anneal. And with that, I'll go ahead and tighten these down. All right, I put this together and I just put some convoluted tubing on there and trimmed it so it would fit fairly well. And the idea is that this thing's gonna get attached to metal and I didn't want too much metal on metal. So I just put some convoluted tubing on here to protect it. I'm gonna zip it to this little shelf I made right here. And uh, this, um, will get bolted up to the engine. I put a spacer right here and a couple of these seven millimeter bolts. I could not get the hose over those three eighths inch barbs and the barbs, when I measured them, at the root, they were probably three eighths. At the tips, they were huge. And um, yeah, there's no way to get an eight millimeter hose over those. And so I turned them down. I kept a little piece of eight millimeter hose at the workbench to check as I worked and what I did is I've got a small desktop lathe and I just took these out, chucked them up, turned these down and um, now I think I'll be able to install this. All right, so we've got it installed. So in summary, we take the line that comes from the filter to the inlet, which is right here on the pump and we cut it and installed this basically a T with some machine fittings on it and it gets us a temperature sensor here I added this little shelf we zip tie it down to to hold it in place and uh, I'm gonna start up a minute and just check for leaks but uh, we should now have a functional temperature sensor again on this car all right, so I started things up and started looking for leaks, and sure enough, I found some. I found one right here where this brass fitting goes into the stainless steel T. I had thought that I didn't need Teflon tape because I was going from a soft brass into a relatively tough stainless, and the same in these locations. These two locations showed no leakage whatsoever, but now I'm gonna be keeping an eye on them. I'm not gonna disturb them unless they start leaking, <laughs> the ones on either end did start leaking and uh, I'm just gonna say it uh, just go ahead and use the Teflon tape everywhere on these threads it will save you headaches in the long run All right, let's take a look at what I wound up doing with the wiring harness through here. So the wiring harness comes around this way and it is inside a, a pretty tough sort of rubber plastic sheath. It comes around here. What I had to do was I had to start over here and split it open and then take some of the, some parts of the wiring harness and double it back as shown. First, you can see this right here. It's running down below to where the flow control is down here. You can see that connector. The other part doubles back. I did not have to add any length to the wiring. There was actually enough wiring in that harness that after I split it open and doubled it back, uh, I was able to just run it all the way over here, no problem. Part of the trick is just trying to make it look neat and I just grabbed convoluted type, uh, tubing and zip ties to uh, keep things under control. All right, so in the last two videos, you've seen me make some upgrades to the fuel system, both the injectors as well as the fuel pump, the temperature sensor, uh, I had to make some modifications, radiator, etc. But the bottom line is that the fuel system's in place. 
I have done the rest of the work and the car is actually running with all of the upgrades I've been talking about, but I need to get the rest of the content out to you. I've got a lot of recorded video to uh, share. The next thing I'll be showing is how I upgraded the plumbing to the intercooler in order to make certain that we, we wouldn't be bursting stock hoses and that sort of thing. So make sure you come back real soon. Watch for it. Make sure you subscribe on Substack so that you get all of our updates. And um, we'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.